is something that has its opposite and we should talk about as well. Toxic femininity. I didn't even know it wasn't like PG, but apparently it's PG-13, it's full of suggestive humor. And I found out last week, they somehow didn't let anyone know this with the marketing campaign. But like, why must you marginalize men? I haven't seen this, but if that is true, why must you do it? I haven't seen it, but I think it comes down to living 20 minutes from Hollywood money. You see right here, next to Asia, shows the nine dashes. Now, those dashes signify Chinese ownership of the ocean islands and reefs. The Chinese believe they own the South China Sea, but they don't. I mean, I mean, as you just showed, the map is is drawn like in crayons. It's roughly a map of the world, but China, you know, Asia is just this big crayon box. But then, right to the east of where China is, are the nine dashes. And and to anyone who's not really focused on geopolitics, those lines don't mean anything. But what those lines indicate is the Communist Party of China puts out official maps with those nine dashes, and they are asserting sovereignty over the entire South China Sea. They're saying all of that is China's. And by the way, all of their neighbors disagree. Vietnam disagrees, the Philippines disagrees. Actually, the country of Vietnam has banned the movie Barbie from their nation because these nine dashes are replicated. Jesse, 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 you have, you have the map right there. He's saying nine dashes. Over and over again, <laughs> and he's so standing in you. front of this <laughs> giant map that shows eight dashes, not nine. <laughs> well, it's almost a form of torture. Yeah, admit that it's nine. All right, but okay, let's no, see. no, but guys, guys, but wait, guys, we? there's other dashes. <laughs> Who cares? It's a childlike map in a Barbie. Why would? Just explain this to me. Explain this to me. Why would a Barbie movie have a pro-China message in it? The Daily Mail, Sarah Vine writing, quote, it's a deeply anti-man movie, an extension of all that TikTok feminism that paints any form of masculinity other than the most anodyne as toxic and predatory and frames women's liberation not as a movement based on achieving equality between the sexes, but as a cultural revenge vehicle designed to write men out of the story all together. Oof. Every male character is either an idiot, a bigot, or a sad, rather pathetic loser. This is actually a trope that of course has just washed through the culture in recent years. A lot of advertisements in America, they always show, they show a family like the man is kind of pathetic. It's the kids or the wife who Every need to film. show the man how to operate the, the remote control or whatever it is. It's become a trope. And, and you know, Sarah Vine in that mentions that famous phrase, toxic masculinity. Mm -hmm. What you just mentioned is something that has its opposite and we should talk about as well, toxic femininity. The whole point of the cultural wars is to get you to not focus on paid family leave, higher minimum wage, Medicare for all. No one in Washington is talking about any of those policies that are incredibly popular, that the American people definitely want, including a majority of Republicans for a lot of those policies. Because we're talking about the frickin' Barbie movie, okay? But I will address it. So number one, yeah, sometimes sitcoms go too far in male bashing. Like 90% of sitcoms are men are idiots, ha ha, let's laugh at them, okay? And I know why it happened, because there used to be sitcoms that were terrible against women, mm -hmm. and it's overcompensating. And so remember, the honeymooners, Oh, we love that classic America, to the moon, Alice! What did that mean? I was gonna, that the husband was gonna punch the wife so hard that he was gonna send her to the moon. So, and that's Jeez. what we used to call wholesome family entertainment in America. So yeah, we're overcompensating by bashing guys a little too much in the sitcoms. Now having said that, it's a freaking Barbie movie. Who do you think they're gonna use as a foil? Yeah, they're gonna make a couple of jokes about guys. It would be shocking if you went to a Barbie movie and there was no jokes about guys. With my generalized assessment of the movie. This movie is not just a piece of <laughs> This movie is a flaming piece of dog piled atop an entire dumpster on fire, piled atop a landfill filled with dog. It is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. On every possible level, it is a horrific movie. The only thing that can be said for this film is production design. Production design is really nice. The costumes are really nice. Also, it's really hard to screw that up. It's really hard to screw that up because you literally have this to model after. All you have to do is this, but big. Every joke that happens in this film happens basically within the first 45 seconds of the film. So for example, Barbie turns on the water and there's no water. Ooh, because you know, like in Barbie house, there's no actual water. Do you, do you get it? And then she drinks, but there's no actual liquid in the, in, the actual, in the actual cup. Oh my God, because she's a Barbie doll. Oh, I get it. Okay, that's all the jokes. There are no more jokes for the rest of the film. The movie's a show. Okay, so conceptually, the movie is a show. I want to ask this. Who is the intended audience for the film? 
Who's the intended audience for this film? So I'll tell you who the intended audience for this film is. And I can tell two ways. One, the previews on the film. And two, the people in the audience. So the intended audience for this film is moms and their eight-year-old daughters. Eight, this is obviously a PR gimmick. And well played, Ben. Everybody's talking about it. You knew that once he lit them on fire, uh, people would talk about it. But guys, it's a cheap trick, right? So like, for example, I could do the same thing right now. Uh, not like the twist I would put on it and I is I would take some doll and pretend that it's Ben Shapiro and then would light it on fire. And then what would happen? Everybody would be outraged and everybody would talk about it. And everybody would say Young Turks, Jenk, etc. It's a cheap trick. And so I wouldn't do that because it's a bad sign. It's not a good thing to do. It's lighting a person on fire. In this case, it's a Barbie. So it's a little different. It's, his is, is more benign than the example that I gave. But still, I mean, what kind of a weirdo takes kids dolls and burns them and it's like, <laughs> right? Like, and tell me you're losing the culture wars without telling me you're losing the culture wars.